I don't have to put them on. Okay, we're back. No, you don't. You're all set. <clears throat> Let me introduce you. This is Impact on KLOS. My name is Frank Sontag. I do have an in-studio guest who will be here for the duration of the program until 8 o'clock. He is the founder of the Frontline Foundation. He's been here a few times before, a couple times, many times. He's my good friend, Ray Castellani. How are you, Ray? I'm, I'm awake, and, <laughs> and um, it, it, Frank, it's really good to be here this morning. And uh, it's always great in the morning because I feel like I'm, I, 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 I'm not in the middle of the night. I don't know how you do it. but um, Take lots of naps. Good. Lots of naps. <laughs> I take lots of naps, too, Frank. It doesn't help me. <laughs> oh. I want to, you know, I've started out several of your uh, of the programs we had with thanks, and I've got to, again, thank you, again, thank all the, the, the tremendous amount of support from the people um, that have listened to KLOS and that are listening to KLOS and that haven't... Um, uh, uh, contacted us in any way shape or form i have one little story to tell you i Please was driving do. down on the, on, do. uh, on the to frontline i think it was on uh, uh mon um uh, monday no uh thursday or friday i forget what day and all of a sudden there's a white car behind me and sh and she pulls up alongside of me and and she says i'd like to talk to you and um lo and behold it's a uh uh, uh we, we pull around the corner and it's a young woman by the name of michelle and uh, she'd been hearing us on the, on the Impact Show for for uh, years, and um, so anyway, uh, it was quite a coincidence. And she loves you, and so I just thought I'd tell you that she pulled you over, huh? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So we've really uh, I, I, this is uh, this year's nine years, Frank. Nine years and another couple of months that we've been together. Uh, so that's a long time, and uh, uh, in that span of time, uh, I've certainly changed. And um, I was uh, 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 this morning hearing on the radio. Um, I said to me, I said, "Boy, what a voice he's got! You know, you sound so great on the radio, and um, and in person too." Oh well, thanks. <laughs> Nine years is a long time, and so obviously that means ten years is a long time, and you've been doing something for right. about ten years. Ten years. It'll be ten years. Uh, uh, ten years ago at this time, I was uh, floundering and wandering around the uh, the countryside in my truck and um, not knowing where, what I was to do, where I was going, and uh, the inception of, uh, of serving food to humanity uh, downtown on Skid Row uh, became apparent, and... Um, uh, the rest is sort of uh, in the history books. Uh, 580,000 meals later from that infamous, infamous uh, day in December of 1987. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those unexplained uh, situations that's uh, happened um, by the amount of servings and by the amount of uh, people that have responded to Frontline. I mean, it's just inexplicable. It was never set out to do all this, period. It was just set out to uh, one or two times uh, to go downtown. And um, it's evolved into something far greater than I've ever, ever... Well, I didn't even know. And I still don't know. But I know where it is. I know where it is. And I know where I am. And uh, and I know uh, the teachings that it has, it has taught me in the past... Um, Ten years, and um, as you know, some of the listeners or some of the people that know me know I haven't been well in the last uh, uh, well, the last three or four months. I've been weakened by the uh, there's been a loss of blood in me, and um, so my iron went down to twenty, and so a lot of changes are taking place right now. And I, I don't know if I'm on a, a new venture or what, but there are changes, and. Um, but uh, yesterday we served over 500 uh, meals, which is wow. That's something. So it was uh, it was exciting, and um, and um, you know that's I have found you know I, it's weird, Frank. I have found as time goes on, it's not it's got nothing to do with uh, the entity. The entity of what's happened it has nothing to do with food. It has nothing to do with with. Um, uh, uh, kitchens and 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 soliciting for uh, uh, fundraisings and things like that. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got it's it's got to do with with uh, understanding and compassion 
Uh, it's got to do with... Um, uh, and there was a, a, a tremendous thing that's happened to me in the past... Um, uh, well, I'm going to say the past three years. And, and I'm, I've been able to articulate it uh, to a degree. And, and, and I've been trying to, to tell people it's not about the food. It, it, it's not about 580,000 meals. It's not about any of that. It's about... It's about the union of two groups of people. It's about the union of, of, of the, the haves and the have-nots, if you want to put it that way, which make one, and, uh, and I believe that. Um, it's also come, evolved with me that, I, that the, the, the concepts of life have changed. It's also about the fact that as I became freer of self, which was probably one of the biggest restrictions of my life, and I only speak for myself, and... Uh, you know, don't please anybody listening. Don't get angry. Not this morning. It's Sunday morning. Please relax. Take it easy. Put the anger in your back pocket and just relax. Uh, but um, anyway, um, that the freedom of self, the freer I became of self, the freer I became of self, the more I was able to feel the pain and agony of my fellow man, my fellow human being, and. Also, the joys of my fellow human being. Not so that there wasn't anything of me restricting me from the purity of the feelings of other people. And the less I cared about my own uh, plans and my own, own deals. Um, uh, and, and this is what is, has evolved. I've been able to see with much more clarity because I've been free of self. It's a tremendous area to be in for me tremendous area to be in not to be not to to disregard what's going on because i don't i feel more acutely of what's going on in our society but because i became a, a, an area of freedom i'm not thinking about myself i'm not saying oh what am i going to do i lost my girlfriend i've got my girlfriend i got my wife i don't have my wife i mean all these i, I can't pay the bills i can't all these silly little things that are such horrible restrictions of of uh uh, for me, for the main, uh, the, the main thing I am focusing on life is, is just, just sort of be a contributor to humanity. And, uh, and my ideas, I don't have any ideas. I, I'm, I'm telling you that straight out. That's another thing. I, I realize I'm idealist. <laughs> is that a word? I don't know if it's a word. But, um, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll put one in the dictionary. Um, but it, it's, it all boiled down here to a, to a very, very, um, acute area for myself that frontline has evolved to this to this point i f when i'm on the streets it's almost like um i know everybody i feel everybody i sense everybody and uh, uh when they're happy they're ha I, I feel that too uh, and it all had to do with the freedom of self the more i became more productive as a human being when i was free of the shackles of all the the, the pullings on the on the uh, self such as uh, things like egotistical self-centered self that is uh, involved and married to one other human being which is the inner self whatever that is um, and these are th areas that i've really cleared away at and, and it's it's a marvelous position to be in and that's what frontline is all about now um, uh, because that freedom of self enables me to see what really is and not the way I perceive it I don't see a person without any arms I don't see a person without any legs I, I see a human being I see a soul and um, and that's exciting Frank because there is because by seeing a soul I see equality and equality is I see 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 I can't stand for any I don't stand for anything anymore it's it's weird it's it's, it's almost like I don't care if anybody believes in what I'm saying it's not important it, it's not important it just doesn't register in my thing but it is important for me to understand you and to contribute to to, to today or to a situ a given situation and that's the freedom of self that's happened to me and uh, and and, uh, and and I have to say this because if I hold this in, then then I am deceiving the true reality of what I of what I really am. Because I want you to like me, or because uh, uh, I'm afraid to say these things. Uh, well, fear doesn't enter me, but it'd be, it, w it would be if I didn't want anybody to know my insides. But somebody, I have to just say this is the way it is. Now, then people will uh, obviously uh, will castigate again. Um, 
because they're not in tune with this. I, I'm not asking you to be in tune with this. I'm just saying this is where I am. And it, again, I use that old thing I've used many times. Just respect where I am because I respect where they are. If a person is consumed with hate, if a person is consumed with prejudice, if a person is consumed with anger, frustration, worry, torment, my God, I understand that. I can't do anything about it. I can only keep going on my way. But those, can you imagine a, the human beings, how many people today, right this moment, are consumed with hate? Sitting there smoking a cigarette and drinking a drink or whatever it is, or how a drink coffee and consumed in hate. I hate my wife. I hate my kids. I hate my job. I hate, I hate, I hate. Just on. I hate the police. I hate the government. I mean, geez, anybody except myself. Because I am so shackled with self. I have this consumed with hate. And that's what it's all about. That's what this, this freedom of self is all about. And, and, and I don't have any of those shackles. I don't have anything to prove. I'm a proveless kind of guy. I just go along, walking along, and, and, or whatever it is along life's path. But I believe in this, Frank. Anyway, I, I rambled on a little no, bit. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. It, in fact, it brings me to the next question, kind of dovetails into it. Frontline and, and people that hear you, you've been on before, automatically think frontline. Okay, they feed people, and now you're saying something different. But mm -hmm. my question is this. In the area of service, service to humanity, some of us maybe do it because oh, we feel good, and there it gets back to that self again. Right. You've oftentimes said on the program that you've been humbled by the opportunity to be an instrument of God. Right. So... What I would like you to talk about is what you've talked about for the last 10 minutes, but talk more about doing things without conditions. Giving for the sake of giving and asking right. nothing in return. Frank, that, again, that goes, ties in with what I had just, just shared or spoke about here. To give for the purity of giving, to, to, just to give for, the, for, the, for, 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 for no other reason except to give. This is, again, attachment to the freedom of self. Because, you see, if I want to feel good, and I'm going to go help or look and see and touch something that is... Um, I don't have to see uh, uh, bombs going off to realize uh, uh, the pain that, that, that's, going, uh, that's surrounding that. I don't have to see these things. I don't have to see starving children on billboards because the the propaganda to put this stuff out to get money from your pocket uh will, will be much more uh, uh uh advantageous for me to receive that money if i put a kid's picture on there with no arms or something like that uh waddling around that's gonna milk you um so i don't have to see that i feel that pain anyway and 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 to be of to be a contributor or to be of service is an honor and a privilege for me the clearer I became of myself, the more I could do for others. And, and uh, uh, service is one of the, the, the most powerful things because most people, uh, a lot of people come to Frontline, a lot of people come to do a lot of things um, uh, because they want to feel good or they want to have a feeling of, geez, I, I, I have a, 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 an inner feeling that feels really good and, I, and, and that's why I do this. Well, I've never felt good about what I've done. I never have. Um, I can talk about this, and anybody want to question me on this, no problem. When you go out and serve 580,000 meals, come back and talk to me, and we'll sit down and we'll see how you feel. Because uh, uh, that's where it's at. It's, 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 it can only be judged by what I've done or what I'm attempting to do, not by what I'm saying or talking about or dreaming about. Say, it's what I, oh, yeah, well, I helped this little old lady across the street, and I didn't feel anything. All I felt is I did an action. I took an action. I helped somebody else. And that's what it's about. And it's about if everybody in this whole world thought, thought, not even did, but thought about another human being, the whole world would be, uh, in an instant, be in an, a totally different place. That's just thought of. So you can imagine what the action of would have would would portray, or the service to be of service to mankind. It is an honor, a privilege, uh, um, uh, for me to be of service to another fellow, another human being. Um, this is what I believe. 
This is what I believe. If I came here and believed that uh, we should kill all this or we should annihilate all that or we should uh, put this one down and put that one down, uh, you know, I'd have a bunch of supporters for that. But uh, I'm just supporting the fact is I want to be of service to mankind and uh, please uh, let me have a few supporters. Um, and my ideology is not is nothing. Uh, but my actions will speak for themselves. And um, so I, I, it, it's, a, it's a tremendous thing to be free of self, to be of service, and not even give it a thought. Mm. And, it, and it's, it's paradoxically wrong in our society today because they say, you want to feel good, don't you? Go out and help somebody else. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I never have. And I've helped. Yesterday, you could have come with me yesterday, Frank. I had uh, th uh, 300 people on the streets that were talking about Ray. Um, and I didn't feel good about it. I was going to say, that's an opportunity to buy into that ego, and I really feel good about myself. That's, Look at all these people. That's right. And, uh, and, and I had no feeling whatsoever. And like I said, whenever I leave downtown, I have a feeling of... of um, uh, I, I'm by the, the, the tears in my eyes, the humbling experience to be used as that instrument for the betterment of, of, of humanity and for God's will, which is to help people. That's all he wants me to do. You've mentioned recently on a handful of programs that Frontline, you recognize, is no longer about serving food. Obviously, in the literal sense it is, right. but in the intention or the, the deeper purpose of what formulated for, it's much more about connection, respect. It's much more about that. Uh, it's all about that, Frank. It's not, it, 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 uh, this is what I say about the involvement. It's really all about that. And, and uh, uh, when attitudes come into play, it bothers me very deeply. When attitudes come into play, it bothers me deeply. These are, the p people are people, human beings are human beings. And, and when people at Frontline have, have, have any kind of an attitude, I dislike it intensely. I really do. And I really want to eliminate it myself. Uh, I'm, I'm a lot older now than I was 10 years ago, so I'm not as uh, volatile. Uh, uh, so I, I do things a little more... Um, diplomatically. So, dip, I was going to say circumspectly, <laughs> diplomatically, you know. And, uh, but, it, but it's true. It, it, it's, it's true. Uh, because I don't get... It, it's, just, it's just not important. That doesn't register anymore, so to speak. But it does... If you said, Ray, is it, yes, it does bother me. It bothers me when there are attitudes that... Um, uh, caustic or, or uh, uh, belligerent uh, attitudes and, and um, better than thou or gossipy and all those things. I, I, I just, I'm tired of it, Frank. I'm really tired of all these kind of um, little innuendos, little things. I, 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 I just want to respect my space. Ray, I've had the good fortune recently, as you know, of for our third newsletter that's going to go out in a week or so. I've been transcribing part of a speech that you did mm -hmm. not too long ago to the Albany Academy in New York. And, and part of what I've come away with is a whole new found just humbling for your life experience and what you've done over the last 10 years. Again, not even in the food aspect, but just the, the connection with humanity. The loving of humanity. And I want you to talk about love. What is love? And, and we say we love, I love you. You know, we tell our wives or our husbands or people we don't know. And yet there's so much in the world that seems to be hate. What is love? Well, you know, there's the four principles that I uh, have incorporated in, into my life. And... and um, the love which we which we have spoken about to me and and again i don't want to uh i want to make this clear that that just please respect my viewpoint here not my not me or anything but love is an action frank love is love is portrayed through a through a group of little actions uh the little actions of kindness of of compassion of understanding um uh that um uh uh, are 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 put forth into a tremendous tremendous form of action uh, because I can sit here like like you said and say I love I love I love and I can be doing that until I'm dead I love I love I love I love and it doesn't mean anything but until I take the action to um, uh, not going for the love but put into understanding let's just say that one word understanding 
and the greater the freer of self I am, the greater the understanding. I mean, it's it's a it's a tremendous thing that we've had here this morning that I've I think anyway. But the freer of self, the more understanding, the more love I can have because the less restrictions I have on myself. The more restrictions I have on myself, the less I can love, the less compassion I have. It goes backwards, too. Everything evolves around that. The main object of the four principles are honesty, unselfishness, purity, and love. Purity, honesty, unselfishness, and love. Love is the last one. I have to be cleared up for all those other things in order to love. I have to be pure of thought in order to love. I have to be honest in order to love. I have to be unselfish in order to love. I mean, my God, I cannot be a selfish, self-centered human being in love. I cannot be an opinionated, um, uh, uh, egotistical uh, human being in love. I, it's the only one I love is me. So, so, so this is all part of that word love, which is a, an encompassing word. But I cannot, I cannot be a derogatory, angry human being in love. I mean, it's silly to even think about that. I cannot be caustic in love. Uh, 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 love is a very peaceful word. Love, is a very, uh, love does not have to have any sides to it. Love does not have to have any uh, I'm right and wrongs to it. it. It just stands all by itself. It's its own entity. But it's an action of purity, honesty, unselfishness. That's the preceding l words to it. And, and, and so when people say, yes, I say I love you, I love you for... Elizabeth Barrett Browning uh, wrote a sonnet many years ago, or I don't know how many years ago, but a lot of years ago. And, and her opening line, well, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee with the breadth and depth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee purely as men strive for right. Anyway, I won't go into it, but it's a beautiful sonnet. That, that, that speaks about love. But look at all the words that she put in there. Purity, honesty, strive for right. I mean, my God. So, so, so she wrote it. She had the wisdom, the, the insight, or whatever you want to, to, to write that. Isn't that funny? I never read a book in my life. <laughs> Here I recite a sonnet that from 45 years ago I learned in school. Oh, my God. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> it, all, it all fits. It all fits. So, so, so love is, is, is a word that's passed on, but my God, it is coupled with the fire and the passion of all these other uh, six or seven beautiful words, understanding, tolerance. That's what it's all about. And, and it can't be any different. It can't be any different because there's no more, there's no more love. Love is love, L-O-V-E. That's just spelt that way. And, 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 and so it's then by encompassing uh, we have talked about Mother um, Teresa. I mean, my God, she's just one, one ball of pure, one ball of honesty, one ball of unselfishness. My God, and and she probably never says the word love, because she doesn't have to, because she is, she exists in that area, and 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 maybe um, uh, Gandhi, who you've spoke about. I I don't know the writings of that man, but I imagine he pretty powerful the words that he must say must be pretty powerful um i wish i was in this particular moment i wish i was well read because i could spot out some of these names but it, 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 it it's it's not important maybe it's better that i don't know because if i'm spouting words and it it co corresponds with some of these other people then i'm in good company um so that's the word love it is thrown around with with with, with abandoned recklessness but there is a deep deep intensity to this word there's a deep, deep intensity to, to, the, to, to the ramifications of saying, I love. Because when you say, I love, it exonerates me from every ideology. It just means it goes into the area of purity. Not, I love with conditions. And that conditions is the killer. I'll love you if you do this. I'll love you if you do that. Or you did this for me, I love you. My God. And it has nothing to do with it. I don't know if the people on the streets love me. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I hope they do. But I mean, uh, because I like that purity. That's why. Not because I want them to love me. I could care less. But because of that purity. Ray, yes, yes, I believe you, Ray. I believe what you're saying. That's got to do with all these things of love. It, it, I mean, when you look at a crooked line or a crooked human being w w with the mind going all in different directions. And I mean, yes, I, I'm, I feel sorry for you. 
But my God Almighty, I don't know what's coming out of your mouth. I don't know whether you're lying to me or whether you're, whether you're uh, impure as far as your thoughts go, whether you're selfish, you're thinking about yourself all the time. I don't know these things. And then you're going to tell me you love me? My God, I mean, what does that mean? You, do you see what I mean? I have I to do. be very cautious because there's all these pitfalls surrounding me all around, all these, these uh, big cliffs. Uh, if I'm not careful, I'll, I'll, I'll be consumed because there's a tremendous amount of, 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 um, of the other things out there. And, and all of them got double meanings. Everybody wants to know the truth. Jeez, I'm telling you the truth right now, but nobody wants to hear this. Or, you, or do you really want me to be honest with you? Yeah, yeah that's another one. Oh, my God. Can I get honest with you now? <laughs> Let me be honest with you. Yeah, right. Anyway, um, but yes, it's a powerful thing, Frank. There's the people on the streets, uh, what came to mind is you have seen love manifest on those streets. Right. And it's not because you wanted Red to stop drinking. It's not because... No. You wanted this person to clean their act up or find this religion or whatever. Just been love. Right. No, conditionless. That's the way it is, Frank. That's the conditionless. I don't know anything for you to do better than what you're doing. My God, how can I trample on your, on, on yourself? But yet society judges when we say, again, we talk about Skid Row, behavior. Oh, they do drugs. There's vile. Oh, my God. They're so much different than us. That castigation, that judgment. Well, that, see, see, that's where I have to supersede is my actions must be stronger than that. I have to be strong in my, in my, in my focus. And those are the pitfalls that I would, could fall into because all I have to do to you is say this. Yeah, I agree with you, Frank. And I'm dead man. I am now a loser. Because now I have conceded, compromised, rationalized, justified my position, and I am a loser. Because I have agreed with something that I don't believe in. And that's a crippling factor. Because the government, or because society, or because of all... I could care less. Because I was given the purity within my own framework. I was given the honesty within my own framework. There are people I don't like, but I don't have to go and say I don't like you. I don't have to do that anymore. Hey, man, no problem. I don't want to have coffee with you. You know, that's all. I just don't want to have coffee with you. And I won't sit across the table from you because I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be around people that are, that are, are, are abrasive in any way, shape, or form to me anymore. I've been in downtown, downtown, my dear friends, there's enough abrasiveness and there's enough hostility and there's enough anger and there's enough frustration, there's enough worry. There's enough, and yet when I am downtown, there is this, this ball of energy that is, is understanding, compassionate, and tolerant. In this, in this horrid situation, we had 300 people waiting there yesterday. Not one person. Oh, a couple of people got a little bit out of line. It got a little testy. But no big deal. I could handle all that stuff. And, 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 and Noreen, I'll tell you one quick story. Noreen and I were down, uh, downtown, to, um, uh, 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 well, two weeks ago tomorrow on a Monday. We served 75 meals we're on a random trip, which we had this random trip. It's coming out in the newsletter. Anyway, um, uh, and, and there was this man, his name was Tony, and he was ranting and raving. I mean, really. I mean, very, very, very volatile uh, human being here. And went on and on. Everybody that we were serving was all about, uh, very tense. Anyway, the police car came up, not for him, because there was a little prostitution going on. So they took a little house down and m made her take it down. And he is now really going. And the police department. And the and then he started with black and white. And when he said that, I looked at him. I said, hey. And I pointed with my two thumbs to myself. And he looked at me. And he was eating the food that we had given him. And he looked at me and as clear as a bell. He said, Ray, you're one of us. And he came over and he sat on the back of the tailgate of my truck. And that was it. I said, my God almighty. I mean, that's how close of a union I have with a man that is raging one moment from drugs, whatever you want to call it. I could care less. I don't even know. It's irrelevant to me. But there was a human being. And in that split second when I said, hey, the connection between him and, and myself became apparent. And he knew, he knew that I was one, that we were one. Now that is love personification. That is caring. That is action. And, and nothing else mattered for that moment. It was about as pure as you can get. And if, and, and if nobody has touched that kind of a moment, 
I have. And I, I uh, uh, um, the poorest of the poor is what um, uh, Mother Teresa talks of. <clears throat> Excuse me. I understand that. I understand that point of view. When I am on Skid Row and why I went to Skid Row, I don't know. I was obedient. I love that word. Obedient to the direction. I'm sick and tired of people talking about I can't, I can't, I can't, and what, 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 what. I was obedient to the direction of me helping out in a specific, specific area. I was obedient to my God as I understand him. I wasn't floundering around with wishy-washy ideas. I am totally unequivocally focused in what I am to do in life and what I am to do in my next venture of life, which I don't know what is, but I believe it'll be given to me before I die. I'm not ready to die yet, folks, so you might hear me a few more times on the Frank Sontag show. <laughs> anyway, Frank, there's some powerful stuff there. My in-studio guest is the founder of the Frontline Foundation, Ray Castellani. I think what I'd like to do now is just take care of what bit of business we have. In fact, we'll open the phones. If anybody has any questions or comments for you this morning, they can give us a call at 1-800-955-5567 or 1-800-955-KLOS. If you have a question about Frontline or anything you'd like to share, you can call us. And as always, Tammy Richardson will pick up the phone. She's in the other room awaiting your calls, and we will be back.